I think firstly it's important to note that really the speed, the scale and scope of China's development, especially in this last 45 almost years, has been unprecedented in human history. And I would say that even before I came to China, which was in 2015, um, I was studying a lot about how it's even possible. I mean, people were puzzled by it. So China's development, uh, the economy, and all of that has been awe-inspiring for people, and I would say particularly those in developing countries. But that said, you know, having lived here for eight years and understanding the Belt and Road Initiative and also the multiple aspects that are being prioritized in development, right? I think for me, if I had to choose one, it would be poverty alleviation. Because we see so many developed countries where poverty is worsening and there is no focus on that. But given that China lifted actually 800 million people out of poverty, even thinking about it, it is a big chunk of the total human population today. And doing that, especially at the, you know, the, um, the eradication of absolute poverty was done during COVID. This is a time when governments were not even thinking about people. This was, so that is maybe the most inspiring for me because not only does it talk about success because we know that so many aspects of China's development from the point the country was founded and beyond, there's so much that is completely, you know, mind blowing about how a country can come together and make this kind of success possible. But that said, you know, really it's the poverty alleviation where they choose to prioritize the basics of human dignity. And I think that's what it's really about. We grew up saying China is our brother country, you know. There is a true affection on both sides. In April 2015, the first phase of projects, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor projects was announced. You know, this was the most exciting thing that had happened for Pakistan in God knows for how long. There was energy projects, infrastructure projects, the ports, special economic zones. It was everything Pakistan needed. So first of all, it's important to understand not only that impact, you know, that energy that it gave our, my country at, at that time, almost 200 million people, but also that it completely matched Pakistan's domestic needs and plan. So this is very important to note that from the go, you know, from the starting point, it was about mutually determining what China can do and what Pakistan really needs and that's what the result was. But that said, you know, over these years, eight years, we have seen massive projects, very important projects, better infrastructure, better transportation in major cities. We have seen the planning, better planning of special economic zones, Gwadarpur, there's so much. But I would say that Maybe for me personally, you know, living here all that period, but also keeping in touch with what's happening in Pakistan, I'd say that the cooperation with China has also gone to the phase, which we call phase two, socio-economic development. And really in Pakistan, you know, today the conversations we are having on poverty alleviation, rural revitalization, thinking about modernizing sectors with the perspective that they can help more ordinary people. This is a very big impact and it's happening in Pakistan and beyond. I think in a good way, the Belt and Road Initiative is like affirmative action. Like think about, you know, how it is responding to the need of particularly developing countries. And over the years, we have seen that countries that needed infrastructure, they needed basic um, a pretext to be able to develop their countries they have received those opportunities through China and it is really a vision you know to think about development that is conducive to our common goals as a mankind and this is really my belief for these last 10 years now right so I would say that at this point we are really at a turning point in history in my view we are seeing that China and developing countries and the developed countries that choose can come together with more energy, with a more focused plan, we are able to have conversations we could not have a few years ago, especially a few decades ago. And that's an opportunity for us, and I'd say especially the Global South, to seize and to unite.